Hello world, it's Goju4 with you once again. Hope you are all doing well and hope that you've all enjoyed your holidays. I know that 2020 was crazy and a difficult year for pretty much everyone. So hopefully the holidays you had a chance to relax and recharge. And I'm hoping that you're also all staying safe. And hopefully 2021 will be a way better year and there's some exciting new things to look forward to. I'm actually recording this on Christmas Day because I wanna share with you guys a Christmas gift I got. That's right, the NECA 1964 Godzilla figure. So I'm gonna be going through the whole unboxing process and then I'll be showing you guys the figure and then I'll be giving you guys my general thoughts on the figure. All of that in this video, so check it out. Surging up from the depths of the sea on a tidal wave of terror to wreak vengeance on mankind. A gigantic beast, cavalcade of electrifying horror. So here we have the NECA 1964 Godzilla figure in all his glory. This is actually one of my most favorite Showa Godzilla suits. I really like the 1964 uh, suit design. When the SH Monster Arts figure for that came out, I really wanted it. I never got a chance to get my hands on it, but when NECA made theirs, I was quite excited about it. So here's the box for you guys, with his wonderful posters from the original Mothra vs. Godzilla 1964. And then on the back, uh, of course, features pictures of the figure with uh, basically a short description of the film. The boxes are always nice. I usually just like keep the front part at least as a nice backdrop for the figure, but I know that some collectors love the boxes and love to keep them in the box. And then as you open them, you know, you'll see there's a flap with him here, and then you can actually see him in here, which is really cool, as you can check him out. So look at him, he's looking good. So I'm ready to take him out of the box. And like I said, I was gonna unbox this figure in front of you guys. Let's see if I can just... So I've almost got him out of the box there, so. He's a pretty good size too. Pictures don't do justice, but definitely from the front. Wow, front, immediate profile, looks so much like the original suit. I think from the profile, it loses a bit more of that accuracy. But if you look at the original suit, I think the snout was a bit longer and the neck was a little different. But I think from the front, they've definitely got more of the accurate appearance. With every NECA figure, it seems, you have to kind of warm up the tail and everything so that you can insert this part in. So I'm not gonna do that during this review but I'll probably show footage later of it. So with this NECA figure, you're gonna get, not only you're gonna get Godzilla and his tail, right? Which you just have to warm it up and it inserts in. And I did the same thing with the Godzilla uh, 2003 figure, the Tokyo SOS figure. NECA's done a much better job with their tails now, I think. I remember I had like a big legendary Godzilla figure from 2014 and that tail kept falling off. It was very unstable. You get Godzilla in all his glory. You get his little piece of the tail and not only that, but you get his blast, which is actually really cool that it actually comes in this set. Um, the 2003 the Tokyo SOS figure did not. The way this is shaped, it should just go straight into his mouth. So not entirely sure how it's supposed to fit or better that way. I'm not really sure, but apparently that's part of that. I mean, that's pretty neat. Well, it doesn't stay in super well, to be honest. It really, eh, it kind of stays in like that but it's barely loose, you know, it's just loosely hanging from his mouth. Admittedly, I'm not such a huge, huge fan of these beam effects anyway, because for me, it's like, it's always gonna look silly because it's like a, a beam blast being made in toy form, like, but it is cool. It's a cool little, like, for those people that love to do like dioramas and decorations, I think they would really like this. It's very detailed, the beam, but it's white. So just FYI, which is kind of how Godzilla's blast looked in those original films. And in his original films, Godzilla's beam was more like a very, very, very light bluish, almost white, just because it wasn't easy to animate that beam back in the 1960s. 
I don't think it ruins the figure by chance. It's a nice extra bonus. In terms of the sculpt, I definitely think, as always, is like it's that NECA, I like to say, inspired by. And this figure is definitely inspired by Godzilla 1964. I think definitely from the front, really looks like Godzilla 1964. In terms of the head, not so much. In terms of the, the dorsal fins, also has that kind of the classic Showa dorsal fins where it's basically like one big row and then some smaller rows on the other side. So I really like that. His legs, definitely, I think they're very, very accurate. And I love the feet. The feet definitely have that classic appearance. Obviously with NECA, you're not gonna get 100% suit accuracy. If you want something like that, you need to get an SH Monster Arts figure. I think it, it's still a great sculpt, honestly. Talking about posability, that's always a good question. These NECA figures, from what I've noticed, they are very posable, but they're quite stiff. So it is a bit like, yes, you get movement, but I mean, there's a lot of joints, but you can't really do much with it, right? Mouth opens and closes as you'd kind of expect, and the head can turn pretty well, neck can kind of turn, his body can turn, and his hands can turn, and even, as always, what I like about NECA figures is that they can open and close their hands, so that's cool, that's pretty easy to do. Yeah, the feet, the legs are really stiff, I will say. If you want something that's really poseable, but doesn't fall apart if you move his hand, then that's what you get with the NECA figures. You know, if you want something that's more poseable, but that uh, runs the risk of the pieces falling off, get an SH Monster Arts. If you don't care about posability and you just want something fun to play with that can move its arms a bit, then you would obviously get a uh, either a Bandai, you know, a movie monster, or if you want Playmates toys <laughs> version. In terms of posability, like I said, you've got the head, you got arms. Hands can close, you've got feet that can turn. Legs, I would say very stiff. Tail, feels quite stiff, honestly. I think the Tokyo SOS Godzilla had more movement in the tail. And then his body can kind of move around a bit like this. So for me, and the kind of things I would expect in terms of posability, I think there's quite a bit of posability. I'm happy with it. I know some people would probably gripe that they say this figure can't really move very much because it's so stiff. Uh, it, like I said, it's, it's a pity that NECA lost the license. Um, I would have loved that they made more Showa Godzillas, for sure. Yeah, I think that would have been really cool if they did like uh, NECA Godzilla 74. I definitely would have uh, purchased that as well. Uh, that's my other favorite suit from the Showa era. Yeah, he's a pretty good, he's a pretty good sized figure. I definitely think they, they managed to capture a lot of the essence of the suit, especially in the head really well, in the spines and in the feet. The one thing I would say is the body form is a little funky. It seems so slumped over, but I think they were trying to capture the way the suit feels. So now I just wanted to bring out my other NECA Godzilla 2002 figure, if you see my review of it, just to kind of give you guys a comparison. I've got them about at the same height. In terms of height, they're almost practically the same. What is nice about these figures is that if you were to uh, see them, and you can tell what Godzilla that is, right? You can look at it and say, okay, that's supposed to be Godzilla this or Godzilla that. And like I said, it is kind of a pity we're losing the license. They made some nice figures, they really did. That new Kong figure they made though, I've seen pictures of it, it looks, it looks quite nice. Yeah, in general, I think NECA did a very good job with their figures and it's clear that over the years they learned from their mistakes because I think their figures now are better than they were when they first started. Compared to their first figures, especially the Godzilla 2014 figures, in terms of quality, in terms of like stability, this is definitely a step above that. And they've come a long way. Like I said, it's a pity that they don't have the license anymore because these are some nice figures. I would have liked to, I would have liked to see them make a Godzilla 74 figure, Godzilla 2000, Godzilla Final Wars, and then other kaiju, you know, from the franchise. It's like classic King Ghidorah and Geras, Space Godzilla, Destroya, all kinds of figures they could have made by Biolante. It is what it is, and they don't have the license anymore, and maybe hopefully another brand will come along in the future to give us more articulated Godzilla figures. I don't think that's going away. I don't think SH Monster Arts will always have the monopoly on articulated Godzilla figures. This is a really nice figure. Uh, I'm very happy with it. I think if you are a huge fan of this suit, I would recommend it. Unless you're looking for something that's very suit accurate and very poseable. It all depends on your needs, how much money you're willing to spend. I think this one though is definitely in a great, great uh, price range. 
and it's well made and everything. And I'm very happy with it. Very excited to have him join my uh, collection. So that's my review of the NECA Godzilla 1964. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my review of the figure. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on this figure. Do you own one already? Do you want to buy one? Let me know. I want to hear from you guys. That's it for this video, guys. Subscribe to see more content like this and hit that like button. That really helps my channel and helps these videos a lot. So really appreciate if you would. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. This right here is my favorite thing ever in the history of forever. I think about this every day. I think about this all night long. I stay awake, not sleeping, because I'm thinking about this.